The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. On this month, on the Tuesday, the 21st of November, we're looking at the Dow down 90 at 35,061. We were anticipating there's a real good chance that we're getting a peak C today with a, a lower high. No, it doesn't have to be that serious to the downside, but a lower high. And then there should be a fourth highest, higher peak. It's the same thing in the Dow. So above 35,227 in the Dow <clears throat> starts a, a leg. If it's today, it extends leg C. If it's tomorrow or Friday or Monday, it, it goes to a leg D. And that's where we have to start being cautious, just based on the history of the fourth highest peak, peak D, and the Chapman methodology. But what is really important is that 95% in the stochastic now – what happens when it's 95%, expect that at some point it's going to go below 20%. So what we're looking at here is some topping uh, formation gives you no time. You have to use other techniques. So that, that's not even in the picture right now because at 95%, you have to go under 80, probably under 76 to say, oh, ho, ho, there's a real problem. Right. The MACD is very strong. Stochastic is way up, uh, stick way up in the 95 area. That's, as I say, very positive. The on-balance form is a little bit overbought. Based on the techniques and out is isn't a leg C, uh, but I use that only in connection to the fact that the leg is in leg C itself. So it happens to correspond. Now, another thing is that the price is way above the nine period moving average, which has supported 34,740. And the 14 period moving average has supported 34,508. That's the daily. This is just a gray leg A in the weekly chart. Now, what we've very seen so often <clears throat> is this falling X goes one to one to the upside, but at least it tries to go back to the left side high. And in this particular instance, <clears throat> left side high was 35,679, uh, the week of the 4th of August. So that to me is kind of a targetish area that I'd be looking for. But one penny above that, or in this case, uh, 0 0.01, and it's going to be in leg C in the monthly chart. That'll be really positive. So with that said, everything's positive right now in the Dow. <clears throat> I'm expecting a little bit of a pullback. Then I'm expecting a leg D. And at that point, does it recycle higher? Well, what happens? But our target has to go from a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode. In whatever chart you're following, get yourself to a D. Uh, I'll do this real quickly because we've got uh, questions that have come up and I wanted to get to them. So the S&P, exactly the same thing. <clears throat> the high yesterday in the 4550s, you're trading at 4536, down just 11 points. You could do that in an eye blink these days. So, And it's the same thing in the weekly chart. 4607 would be the upside target. Yeah, we are at 4536. That's 60 points. That's about 600 down points. I don't know if we can do that in this move, but that is what we look at to start a leg D at 4607.08 in the monthly chart. Huh, I think we will get there in 2023, but we're going to have to just wait a little bit. Looking at the QQQ, NDX 100 trading vehicle, very nice action peak C. Um, if there's no new recovery high today, and I suspect we will get to that D. Same thing. And in fact, in this case, the, the on balance volume is extremely overbought. Um, but it's that just says on a very short-term basis, it doesn't say, oh, this is the big sell signal. All right. Within that context, we've got a little ping that just went here from my engineer, L. And I'm going to check out what it is. I believe I know what it is. And yes. So as I'm about to go to all the different um, the metals, etc., let's just go straight to John in Philly. John, how are you? Basil, I'm doing very well. Hope you're doing the same, and uh, thanks for taking the yes. call. Yes, pleasure. You'd like to Basil, look I, at, yes. Yes, Basil, I wanted to ask if you could share your thoughts with me on GDX. Uh, just uh, for illustrious, uh, illustrative purposes, in the Tiger's Den, I've posted the daily chart with your 200 exponential moving average. And, Basil, yes. I just observe that since Labor Day, uh, 
GDX has been mucking around near lows and has come up to, and today for the fourth time, is testing that 200-day EMA. Now, Correct. I so, speculate so let me just say, personally... I just wanted to show folks in the in, folks are looking at Tiger TV. I'm so, I'm just waving my pointer right here on the left side chart. That's the daily chart. John's talking about this orange line right here. Look how t how many times. In fact, I'm going to expand since you're talking about the daily. I'll expand that out and say, look how many times since it broke down in August. That 200 period moving average has been an extraordinary resistance level. But we've been tackling it so many times that, yes, John, you're going on to the next thing. The next thing you wanted to say is? I was just going to say, I speculate this is building cause to launch past uh, up and over what I, I'm assuming is key resistance with your 200-day exponential moving average. So that's my view. I wanted to ask if you see something similar and just to give us your read on that, please. So, folks, we, uh, John's looking at the GDX. The GDX is the market vectors, gold miners, ETF. And basically, in my history of looking at this, I've always thought that the best, uh, the, way I, the way I've analyzed the relationship of certain gold stocks to the GDX's action is that my preference always is when the GDX, the gold miners, I don't care what the reason is, they lead the move up with gold moving higher, and then gold can lead. I don't like when gold goes up and then these guys get dragged up because that's usually subject to failure. Something else is happening. So just let me just very briefly say, early on in the Middle East war, the I was looking at it and saying, that was a spectacular initial move in gold from that August the 7th, uh, that was August the 4th, actually, it started to form a base. And the, that was the week, uh, Friday was the 5th. And then 6 was the uh, attack on Israel. And then gold soared to the upside. But the GDX, the GDX seemed to, uh, whoops, I went to the wrong chart. I wanted to say the gold at that low, and I typed it in here, war, and that was from the 6th of, of October. That was the low. Coincidentally, over the weekend, that was on the Saturday, uh, the 7th, there, there was that brutal attack. And on the 9th, gold started to scream to the upside. Now, gold moved very much sharper initially. And then the GDX kind of followed. And my analysis was, watching it closely, <clears throat> was that historically, gold becomes the go-to place for... Uh, major countries, geopolitically, if ever there's a problem, gold gold comes to the forefront. But the really big move comes a little after you get a major financial collapse. And I was looking at the XLF. Well, the XLF, that's the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, made a loan on the 27th of August, I mean, of October, much later. Uh, but it wasn't breaking down. So this was quite independent. So, uh, John, I know like you like to go back to the den and then uh, and uh, listen, but if the, your question is on the GDX, I'm going to go to that in relation to what I'm looking at as well as to Silver. Is that okay? I believe so. We'll get John. Will John be listening in the den? We'll continue. Guys, at 83 Basil Chap and Tiger Nations Hour, and I'll be back talking about gold. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, bro. So let me just, I mean, let me give you the answer, John, uh, to John and George in Boston. And George, are you the George that bought Amazon about four or five points off that, that law? I think it was in October, 128. What was it? Anyway, um, yeah, so... I, I, looking at the 200 period moving average, that's a magnet. Now, what I'm going to say is this. I needed, um, I'd, I'd like the full week to be able to look out towards the end of December. But I'm getting clues now. So in the GDX, the longer term look, because look how, how it's gone sideways. Look at that 200 period moving average in the GDX. It's just been in the weekly chart. At 30.15 and the daily chart at 29 point, I think it's 29.63. Let me just get that right. 29.47. Um, that's been tremendous resistance. But as I'm looking at the Middle East now and I'm looking at gold, now I'm starting to see that gold is in play. Therefore, a higher gold price is going to make, the, uh, make it more lucrative for the gold stocks. Okay, make it as simple as that. And, and s silver is exactly the same thing, except silver keeps pushing above, trying to hold above for four or five sessions now, above the 200 period moving average, both in the daily and the weekly. So the irony of the whole thing is that silver is actually acting a lot better. And that tells me that the metals are, are are more in play now than it was just a ge geopolitical scene. And that's something that I needed up until this past weekend. And I think I need it into this coming weekend because I'm getting toppy toppy signs in the stock market itself, just short term, this is daily charts, not weekly charts. Okay, so that just tells me that I've got to think of these, and I've been talking about this for about a year and a half, that you've got to think of so many parts of the puzzle now completely independently when the uh, gold comes when gold goes up uh, it doesn't mean that the dollar is collapsing when the dollar goes up it doesn't mean gold's collapsing. they're all doing separate things right now except that the dollar and I now have to include that here because the dollars look there's left side right side price time ash and John the answer is coming up but the price movement in the dollar has got this incredible arch formation you see this left side right side price time ash to this cup after that peak E, well, we've got until about the 28th, 29th to get to the 102 area. 
Um, and today's low is already at 103.18. We could get it sooner. Just in terms of the patterns, this is the same pattern that I used this morning. When I did the 10-minute chart, look, I put an X in, and I did this at about 6 o'clock this morning. I put that in, and this gave me the left side, right side price time match to this low. Um, and that was the low of 12.50 yesterday morning at 4.544.50. And here we are at 445 4, 47 having hidden hit the low so the pattern is the same thing let me go back to this and it says that the dollar has the same arch formation same plumb line and not at the high but just off the high at a, in this particular case a trough and that just gives me a picture that says okay if that's kind of working what do you get for the gdx using the same pattern well the gdx says we did the one to one this big the big blue lines here that's kind of complete now we start to make a higher low i've got the fibonacci in here uh, not everything works with fibonacci for me and in this case i'm just taking it off because i don't think for me it's necessary right now because you've got this falling x formation and that just says in the next that's why i wanted this weekend to kind of complete my thoughts but i'm going to do it now a little premature my thinking is that gold, there, there could be intraday and even intraweek sudden spikes to the upside and even drops to the downside. But I'm thinking just at this particular point that this particular high right here in gold, in the GDX, I'm sorry, not the gold, gold the GDX, in the 31.75 to 31.83 area will be the first big target on the upside to push away from the 200 period moving average. And the MACD is good. The nine period moving average today is, is turning L. That means long. And the stochastic still weak, but it's rounding at 55. On balance one is very weak. And relative strength is very weak. So this is a, a work in progress. And with the gold up 20 something points to have uh, up 80, 89 cents in the GDX is good. But actually at this point with gold acting the way it is, you would expect this already at 31. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying there is now an inverse head and shoulders pattern in the gold, the GDX chart. The neckline is at about 30, uh, let's call it 30, let's call it 38.5, just for the moment to give it a little bit of room. Um, if that gets taken out, that would be the, but the high that was made at the peak C minus on the week, on 18th of July at 32.93. So let's call it 33. That whole area between 32 and 33 is going to require gold because it's leading now and it's dragging the uh, GDX and the gold miners up. I have one particular stock that's doing very well, and that's a clue to me that this is in place. So it happens to be a South African uh, conglomerate. Now what I'm looking at is, so that's the area. So I'm thinking that by the second week of December, let me confirm that, That'll be not the second, it's the second full week of December, the week of the, th uh, the 11th, going into the 13th. If gold, if the GDX has not broken, even just for one day, below 27, but in fact is starting to trade and hold three to five sessions in the 30.50 or higher area, then I have to consider that there's going to be an attempt going into the end of the year to get to this down Travel wave inside track repellent zone, and that takes you. Let me just make sure that I'm going to the end of the year. That's this is this is November, that'll be December. It's a bit much, but I'd say 33 is the area that I'm looking at for the GDX. That's about another four points, about another eight percent or so high. But these things move very quickly, so that's my look right now. And the same thing for silver, if George is listening, silver has a slightly better chart. He has also the same kind of head and shoulders pattern. But basically, I look at, look at it as a lopsided cup. I'm going to the midpoint there. I'm going to the upside. Well, first of all, I have written in, and this is not right because we've already passed it. So I have to take this away, and I have to use Chapman Wave inside track. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go right here. There's a particular candle that I like to use. And that's that candle right there. Let's see where that takes you. And this is a much clearer picture for me. I go one step at a time. I could do something extravagant and say, oh, yeah, easy. Uh, 22.95 for the high of uh, August the 30th. That's my target. But you know that you have to go step by step because to get there, you've got to get through. Ah, there it is. Okay. 
So by the 27th of November, we should be tackling the bottom part of this particular candle, the gap, the big red candle before the gap down on the 1st of September, the low is 22.15 and the high is 22.70. I'm going to the middle of that um, and I'm saying that if this is correct and if I can use, now in the Chavamay methodology, I like to look at a particular trough or a candle or a gap and I go from there to the upside. I'm going to use this gap right here and I'm going to go there and say, that's my inside wedge target repellent zone right there. So I think I've got it now. Um, and all I'm going to say is, uh, subject, to, <laughs> subject to change, you've got to hold 21.10 to 20.80 on any pullback in the silver, SLV, iShare Silver Trust. But my thinking is that by mid-December, we should be in the 22.50 to 23 area. So I hope I've answered that question. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, just to uh, kind of conclude that uh, assumption that there's going to be Higher prices, um, the the longer that the price can stay away from this orange 200 period moving average by moving higher, because it is at a D right now. I've got an alternate account, so I wanted to talk about that briefly. You see this peak C1 and C2, when the price gets just so close, but it doesn't break to a leg D and the technicals fail right at that point, I invariably say, I'm going to call that a phantom peak. But so often, without taking out the low bar to cancel everything, 
it goes to a D. At that point, this D could also land up having an alternate count and being a brand new A. I don't want to get carried away here. How many alternates can you have? So what I am looking at is in the downtrend line, I'm going to change this now. You see what I like to do so there's a very visual. You can see it. I like to uh, just do it so that when people are watching, I don't have to explain it, over-explain it. This is called the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. And when the price gets in there, look how many times – one, two, three, four, five, six. This is well, the week's not finished, but six times in the past uh, since early July, this price has been hit, and the, and the price can't get over it. It gets repelled. But look what's happened. This is only Tuesday. I have to wait for Friday, but right now you've got an L. That means that the the nine period moving average has gone over the fourteen. It'll show up after this, but it's just saying right now it's flipped up. Uh, yep, it's green. <clears throat> the MACD's turned positive. Stochastic's flat, which is kind of it's not a good sign. It's 54 percent. It should be higher. On balance of, of volume is higher. In the daily chart, the relative strength has started to improve. So that's why I'm saying I'm seeing some building with that. We might be at a fulcrum right here. This won't be the exact price low in terms of looking at a plumb line right here. I've got a feeling the plumb line is probably somewhere over there, and I'm looking to the right side. But there's a chance that if all this turns positive, now I'm looking at the the, the hull of a boat where this is the left side, Quoro, that's the, the, the corner of the semicircle. And then we're looking now, even though this is the low, I'm saying it's probably somewhere over there. And now we're looking at it doesn't tell you how high at this point. It just says now we've got the hull of the boat. The right side is coming in. So now everything's going to be higher highs and higher lows unless the repellent over the next few days says you start to slide back under 21. That means back at 20.41, the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart of the iShares Silver Trust. Uh, and it will be the same thing in silver. They look uh, look. Silver is exactly the same chart, except that this inside track uh, is a slightly different one because it was a double top and I'm using the right side. So let me just draw that in. There we go. Uh, green, pink. I've got a little pink coming, so I've got to go and check out. We've got, uh, we've got Charlie in Framingham. Charlie, how are you? I'm doing well. Can you hear me okay? I certainly can. And your question is? GFI. I'm in it, um, and I'm interested in your take on whether or not it can get up into the, uh, like, $16, maybe, well, $14.50, $15. Okay. So Short first you're looking at I'm gold, a, gold kind of fields. A Okay, gold feels, and, and you would like to hold this at least a week or two weeks, or if it goes longer, that's fine, but you, you, you're you prepared to look at it more short term until it becomes intermediate term. Is that correct? Exactly. Totally okay. correct. So the way I'm looking at, and this was one of those that I was looking at and saying, you know, this has held that 200 period moving average absolutely fabulously. I don't know if you ever use this technique, but look how it's sat there. It's made an arch formation. It went to a slightly low, lower low to a trough E. It failed at a peak, or it didn't fail, but it, it turned down at a peak uh, B. And now underneath it, it's got a peak A, and this is another gray leg B until it takes out that high. I actually like this. This is one of those that I was looking at, and I was saying, they don't all do this. The way it took off from the 10 area, going to the 1450, and then pulling back to the 12-ish uh, area, and now it's at 13. So this is the kind of chart that is, for me, much more constructive because it gives you exact parameters. And you can see, in, I don't know if you're looking at the charts, but in the weekly, I've got the falling axe formation, meaning it made a peak E, then it made lower, low, lower highs and much lower lows. And then there's this pattern right here. And then all of a sudden, it forms a base right there. May high, high, higher lows, much lo lower lows. So high, high, low lows, forms a base, tries to take out this resistance line. There it is. There's a resistance line inside, inside track, Chapman Wave repellent zone. It wants to become a propellant zone. If it does that, it should have a parallel movement, the same number of bars 
trying to get to the left side high. So all of that meets the criteria that I'm looking at. The um, weekly chart went from long after being negative for quite a few weeks, it went long just for maybe two weeks, and it went, it went pink, and now it's gone back to L, but the week is just beginning, so I can't talk about it as if it's Friday at the close. I like it, so this is what I'm going to say to you. What I like to do is to be as conservative as possible. I start off with my trend lines at the most hit number of bars. I might have to use a candle, the full, uh, not just the wick, but the full candle body sometimes. And then as it moves up, if it makes it very obvious to me that there's another series of highs, and that's what I've done right now, you can see it's so close to breaking out. I, what price are you in? Um, hang on. Um, sorry to do this to you. That's no problem at all. Um, I'm in at $13.13. Okay, so you're up 60, 60 cents. So it gives you a little bit of a cushion. This is what I'm going to say to you. I would. I don't want to tell you how to plan the trade because you've just told me that you're a swing trader, but this is the way I would look at it. If, um, if Gold Fields Limited, GFI, can hold above right here if it can hold above 13 points let me double check i want to give you the right price 13.94 for more than 35 or 40 minutes in the next day or so i would add another position not big but just add a small position make that my trading position and keep my core that you're in at close to 13 and then what happens as soon as it breaks that level, you look to the left side and the higher 14.18 on the 3rd of November, that becomes your first target. If it closes above that, immediately you can say, ha ha, now the high that was made on the 18th of October at 14, whoops, what was it, 14, 14, 14 52 becomes the next target. Then I can start to look at the weekly chart and say, aha. Now I've got something because it's broken out from this channel wave inside track repellent zone, both in the daily and the weekly. And that says, that's nice. And if you're looking at the monthly chart, it's, it's in a very strong, well-defined up channel. What I like to do in a channel like this is I like to grab, um, hmm, we've got a break coming up. You know what, it's worth doing this. So if you want to hold on, I'm going to do a little bit of work here and I want to show you the type of thing that I like to look at and maybe just give you a clue as to what could be your next parameters. And I'll do that as soon as we get back. Can you hold on? Yep. Absolutely. Okay, good. Folks, we've got Charlie and Framing and we're holding on. We're looking at GFI, Dow's down 101. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. We're on with Charlie in Framingham, Massachusetts, a uh, town just fairly near where I live in Massachusetts. So, Charlie, the first step, as I say, is to get close to that 14 level. Hmm. I didn't talk to you about support. Forget about the upside just for the moment because you need to look at this because it's making lower highs and lower lows. So this really has to prove itself. GFI trading at 13.72, up 64, actually up almost 5% today and gapped up. But it doesn't always hold gaps. But it has to, I, I suspect that the 12... 80 area is that where the 200 period moving average is, is a worst case basis on a pullback. But as I say, I'm looking at this and my weekly chart, it's a little aggressive. If I make my plumb line, the low that was made the, right on the 200 period, amazing. Look at the 200 period, how it held, and it had that huge move from 9 to 18, almost doubled, in fact, from March. And then it pulls back way to, to the rising 200 period moving average. So it's a rising line. That's positive. So a little bit aggressively, but if I can see this trading at 14 any time next week, between now and next week, then and it can start to close above the high that was made the week of the 26th, which is at 1430, uh, 14.52, then I have a, a little bit aggressive. I might have to modify this, but it says that the high that was made both on the 4th of August, which is 11.40, and the high that was made, you're loving the sound of these numbers, I'm sure. We get the 21st of July at uh, uh, 16.05. Uh, that would be the Champ Wave Inside Track, a repellent zone, make it a dashed line, because that's what I always do uh, right there to be consistent. That's a little bit aggressive, but that's kind of what I'd be looking at. Then the trend line that I'm using here, the most hit number of bars that I think is very important, at least by eye, confirms that in December, there should be an attempt to get to the 15s, 15.10. So all of this is saying <clears throat> that gold, not all the gold stocks, but some of the look at GFI, ASA is moving very nicely to the upside. Uh, ASA is ASA gold mine. Look at that big move up, 3.3% today. Uh, you've got, um, I want you to look at GOLD. This is... Um, uh, Barry Gold. See, it, they're not all participating. Uh, and Nova Gold, they're not all participating. So it's very specialized. And that's why you've got one of those that's working very well. So that's why I think that money will flow into the ones that are working best. And that's what I'm looking at. I hope that helps you. Yeah, no, I always value your input. You're the best, Basil. Well, thank you very Happy much, John. And a great Thanksgiving to you and your family, especially for that compliment. A very special <laughs> Thanksgiving. Thank you. So, folks, we're looking at uh, Dow down 101. I, I, I promise uh, I had questions about it. So let me just quick, let me see if I skip. Yeah, KRE, remember I mentioned the if, the if the financials were really being decimated like in 2007, that's where gold, you know, countries and big institutions go for gold as, as a security. 
So the KR, the KRE, which is the uh, this is the regional S and P banking ETF, uh, has stalled at a peak C one C two, but it's had a really nice move from the thirty sevens to the forty fours. It's trading at forty four seventy right now. But if you look at the rectangle formation of the weekly chart, you've got an arch that goes to an a lowercase m. It's very different. So the question was, X, uh, well, uh, well, what do I think of KRE? I think it's okay. But I think that the uh, action of the XLF, the S&P Select Financial, is just a little bit stronger because they have some of the more strong banks. I don't think it's time just yet for the KRE to move. But if you're in the KRE, it's, it's holding very nicely on the daily chart right now. Can it move to the 50 level, 49.50? Well, that's five points. It's about 11% from here, 10%. Well, it first has to overcome the 200 period moving average of 46. It's called a 40, 45.90. So it's called a 46. That's like a magnet. And look at this, how important this 200 period moving average is. It hasn't been there. It just t almost touched it back in uh, July. It went to, what was it, 59, 49.57. Uh, and then it failed miserably, came back down, but made a higher low. So it's making the second... Um, Cup formation. In fact, I had drawn this in because that was the measured move that I had. It got there a little bit early. Let's just do this again. So, yes, I think it's okay. It's moving nicely. It's going to need a lot more to break the magnet line of 46 to be able to get to, I say, 47.80. No, I'd actually have to say 48.25. Once it does that, then it's headed towards this high over here. So, if you're in it, I'm not sure it's the best vehicle right now, but it can. This is one of those that could have a sudden move to the upside and then stall maybe at the 49s. You'd love 49 if you're in right now. But then monthly chart did that beautiful left side, right side price match from uh, the 33.46 low in 2020 to the high of 78 back in January of 2022. It went to the exact time, not the bar, but the, and not, not the price, but the exact low in the 34s um, six months ago, and it's trying to trying to break out. The the technicals are starting to improve, and that's a big sign. So okay, next question came in. Could I look at um, AQST? A, uh, AQST is AQS? No, ACST. Uh, this is AQST. Wow, what is this is trading in 2000. Five cents and looks horrible. But AQST is breaking a, a quest of Therapeutics Inc.'s biotech. Uh, maybe I lost my notations from this. This is, I believe, A, and then it gets a repeat A. So that's an A. Trading at 1.93 up 14 cents. Some of you don't even bother looking at single digit stocks. That's okay. Everybody has their own techniques. B, C, oh, three Bs. Uh, would that would that be higher? No, this is a C and that's a D. Yeah, it's in leg D. I like it. I think it's doing very well. Look, look how it's pushed in a cup formation away from the 200 period moving average. Uh, I will just say this, that it's in leg D. The unbalanced volume is not overbought yet. The stochastics at 83. Everything's positive. So that just says I'd rather say not the upside at the moment, but I would say 183 to 174 would be key support on this biotech stock. That's really what you want to be looking at in biotechs. Upside is unlimited because once they get going, it's, usually it's the left side high. Well, the left side high, I don't want to go there just yet, is way in the 230, uh, two, 229 uh, high that was made in April of this year. So let's not do this. It's broken a downtrend line. It's got a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. I like it very much, but on a very short-term basis, it is leg D. If there's one more flurry, that flurry might just touch two and then pull back. But most importantly for you is 180, 185, 183, one, just, just above 180 to the 174 area. That's going to be key support. Next question came in. Oh, yeah, thank you. I, I, got, I got a congratulations today on something that I don't feel I should get a congratulations for. I appreciate it, but I didn't do what I kept talking about. And this is Symbotic Inc. end-to-end -end AI. Even in my hour-long video on, on, on Saturday, I said, look, I love this stock. We're in at 21. We've taken a little bit off. It ran all the way to 68. 
a 64.14 and pull back. Recently, we tried to get in and we took a small little losses, but I wanted to add to the positions some of them, what that we took off and the earnings came out, the day at 33%, and I didn't let you hold it. I, I, I apologize for that. We got a fantastic game, but for the new, new entries, might have missed it. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hey, let me do three things here. Number one is, um, I, I, I keep getting these messages about people who had checks washed that were sent in the mail, and the, the, price, the, the price gets changed and everything, and they just, uh, if they didn't catch it, or some didn't catch it, they had thousands of dollars, tens of thousands in some cases, evidently. I uh, just wanted to mention that as a public warning. Um, the other is that I, I will talk about the EVs, where we are in relation to what I, I would be looking at the 1920s, the whole relationship that goes on there. The third thing is, um, yes, I said I'd mentioned the Microsoft, but let me just tell you, uh, down 18 right now, we went to that X, that the number that I thought. So now the key support is going to be 45.30 in the S&P. And you want to see, so far, this is just, a, I mean, it's like an intraday pullback because yesterday we were up 200. We're only down 80, 90 in the Dow and down 18. It's not a big deal at all. So I'm anticipating. So if after 130 today, if the Dow is still down minus 50 or more, that just says look out for a weakish close. Um, but I'm anticipating now I can go to the third thing I wanted to talk about before we wrap up. You'll go to Steve Rhodes. <clears throat> yeah, so obviously I'm real people in at 21 for the stock uh, symbolic. 
end-to-end -end robotic warehouse automation. I mean, they've got everything going for them, but they just didn't do quite what I wanted. And I, I put in fairly tight subs for new entries into just an add-on position. Um, so we should have had, even on the weekend, I was talking about it, I could have on Monday said, okay, for 37, this is grab it, here it is at 49. But this is a really good sign. So for this particular stock. And the other was Microsoft. So Microsoft, yes, we're in the 338 level. We've hit 378, 40-point gain. Um, but most importantly, it is on a leg D. This is the alternate count. I said an F slash C often goes to a D. We got to the D yesterday. So Microsoft is saying, I'm getting a little bit kind of overboardish right now at a spectacular move. And that corresponds to the Dow, I-N-D-U, in leg C, S&P in leg C. I'm anticipating we get to those Ds. Yeah, it could go a little higher, but I think we're getting very close to some kind of resistance level. Let's put it that way. Have a 